How are we doing, Gambit lovers? So today, I am so excited to share with you an amazing Bush Gas Gambit victory that I had on stream, and it was featuring a Crazy Rook Sacrifice and a bit of light smack talk to Twitch chatters who were doubting the Bush Gas Gambit. So I'm going to play you all the Twitch clip of the game, and afterwards, I'll be back to provide some analysis of the game and show you some more cool tricks and traps and theory of this Stockfish-approved opening choice of my opponent against the Bush Gas Gambit. Enjoy. All right, too high to Berserk, but not too high to play a Bush Gas Gambit. Yes, here we go. Okay, rich Knight Retreats, Rare Line, Rare Line in the Bush Gas. But we've got this. All right, so D4 now invites Knight Takes, and I'm winning that. Bishop E2, Theory. All Theory. All right, let's play here, Castles Long. And, okay, we've got a queenside castler, it appears. A queenside castler. Let's dodge that bishop trade. Hmm. Where are you going to castle, buddy? Where are you going? Play bishop e5. Ah, okay, kingside. Can I take this? Take this on. Maybe. No, it would be crazy. No, it wasn't going to work. It might have been fairly tricky. Okay, so he got rid of that bishop, which I actually really wanted. Because that bishop would have helped me make some threats here. But it's okay, we're still going to bring our rooks in. Still going to bring our rooks in and stuff. Um, Alright, let's, yeah, let's bring that knight around. Knight f four. We can make a lot of threats here. There's still a lot of pressure on him. Okay, so he wants, he wants this. All right, knight g six. Knight f four. Pressure, pressure. Oh, trying to take away my idea. What if I maybe look at some sacrifices? He doesn't want that either. Actually, you know what? Too bad for you. We are going to sacrifice here. So if rook takes or knight takes, I get to take twice here. And if queen takes, I'm looking at knight h4 and really piling on right there. So... Issue with knight h4, e5. No, we're good. We're good. Queen e5, I'm going to take it like this. Now if you take my queen, I just got that knight for free. Queen e5, takes, takes, takes. He's got a real problem on f3. He's got a real, real problem with that knight. What's he going to do about that knight? Got a lot of pressure there. What's up, 1515? How are you doing? We've got a bush gas gambit in this game. We've got an accepted bush gas gambit. Took it. Played, played one of the better lines, so he's kind of just up a pawn. But here, we've kept bringing our pieces out. We're still sacrificing. And we've got a ton of pressure on this knight, so it's looking good to get a nice bush gas gambit victory. All right, queen e5, that's what we thought. But now bishop takes. Now, if you want to trade queens, the price of that was that full knight. What other opening is there? What other opening is there? Okay. I don't want you messing around on the A file. For... Actually, okay. You can mess around on it. Um, good. I will refuse to play openings that are worse than plus three according to Stockfish. Take Stockfish's opinion with a grain of salt, you know? <laughs> Uh-oh, is there a pass pawn? Hopefully not. Okay, you play a7, I'm just gonna put my king there and just hopefully... Hopefully not get mated. Maybe I should... If I captured, maybe I gave the knight that square. So, we've got two pieces for a rook and a pawn. 
which is pretty good. And I mean, it depends on the specifics, of course, all the time. All right, so he wanted to fork me. But I think this was a good spot for my knight anyway, and now it's even better. We've got some juice, some juicy captures. That pawn's falling. I, I don't really want to lose this one. Um, yeah, let's be careful here. All right, what if I just defend this? Still want to do my stuff. Just don't want you doing your stuff. Okay, we can trade here. And I think the a7 pawn's pretty much just mine now. This rook is gone. I held f7 as well. So, yeah, my position's pretty solid. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't really want to move that bishop. I don't want to make that trade. Let's get this pawn. Now I've got my own pass pawns. I've got my own guys here. Here we go. Go, go, go. Go, pawn, go. Go. We've got it. We've got it. He went all the way. He went all the way. Nice. How's that for plus three? How is that for plus three? We've got a nice victory there in the Bush Gas Gambit to improve us to three and zero on this tournament. I think that was that that that, that was a pretty nice game. Um, ready for some awesome lines? So let's have a look. Uh, this is the Bush Gas Gambit, and I know a lot of you might be familiar, but for those of you who are not, this is the mainline Bush Gas Gambit with Bishop C four, the most common move, Knight F six, offering the pawn for the second time. So the stockfish thinks we've gone completely insane. Knight takes e5. A lot of people just can't resist. But knight c6 here. Uh, now, there's two captures on f7. Uh, if knight takes f7, there's bishop takes f2. Uh, I would definitely recommend watching the video right above me right now for coverage on all of this stuff. But today, we are going to cover the initial stockfish recommendation of taking the pawn right away. Knight c6. Now, the most common move here is knight takes c6. D takes c6, giving us our Stafford-esque capture. And uh, here we have f5, an additional resource if we don't like transposing uh, into the Stafford, giving us lots of pressure here, for example, d3, f5, giving us lots of pressure here on f2 and e4 down the f and e files. But today is going to be dedicated not to knight takes c6, but in the game move my opponent played in the game of knight back to f3, the big scary stockfish recommendation of like more than plus two. So d5 uh, takes, queen takes, Note here, the, the next most common move of d4 allows takes, and after this, black is just doing uh, totally, totally fine. So takes, queen takes. Almost everybody's playing knight c3. Slightly more solid approach is to play c3, d4. This is like the Eurosolve Gambit. Uh, I believe Jonathan Schrantz has made uh, a couple videos on this, but uh, black here is completely fine by just bringing out all their pieces anyway. But knight c3, most common move, queen h5. And now a lot of people are falling for this trick that throws away white's whole advantage with d4, uh, where we can play here knight takes d4. Very clever move. So if they take back, we take the queen, take the knight, and white's extra pawn and entire advantage has gone away. So here, bishop e2, most common move, bishop g4, as we saw in the game. And now here, d4 being the most common move for white. And let's talk about d4. So we want to play castles long. We want to play castles long, and in our pseudo Yurasov variation, we're trying to use both these files. So here we have an excellent pin onto the queen, which to play here bishop e3. And now here I want to recommend to you, actually, a move that's never been played before. It's f5. And so let's talk about f5. So the point is, like, let's say castles, knight f6. And now we have a, a, a lot of fun ideas. So let's say, let's say it's our move again, and we play here f4. So now we're distracting the bishop from the defense here. Should take. Knight takes d4. We're going to crash through here, threatening to play knight takes f3 check, hitting the queen. So much pressure on f3 and e2. White should take it. Rook takes d4. And here white's actually already lost. Uh, the, with, the, with, the, with the queen attacked, uh, these bishops are both under, under attack. So bishop d2, rook d8. Overwhelming pin using all of our pieces here. Uh, we can see here bishop takes g4 is check, but knight takes g4. This is why we played knight f6 first before pushing this pawn. So let, now, now let's say like the queen defends the bishop. But here we have a fantastic, fantastic trick. Our favorite target in our pseudo Urasov is attacking h2. And we have a great pause the video moment here. Rook takes f4. 
takes and bishop d6. Uh, with white's queen falling and queen takes h2 coming next turn. So we can see that idea coming in a couple situations. So like, let's say queen d2, we play here f4. Takes f4, knight takes d4. Takes, rook takes. And again here, if bishop d3, you know the move. Taking this bishop, bishop d6, good game. So queen e3 holds on to more things, but but I think just rook e8, and we're winning at least a bishop in this position. So this f5, f4 idea, very, very strong. Like, let's say white plays it the other way, tries to castle this way. f4 takes, and he takes d4. We're crashing through again, and again, there's no bishop d3, although that's probably their best bet, even though it loses the rook here. Um, queen e3 again, just uh, even worse, rook takes d1 is check. <laughs> so white is lost. They need some very, very precise defenses here um, after f5. So the move my opponent played in the game here is d3, castles, and bishop to e3. Uh, and now here, I actually did not realize in the game that my bishop is protected. <laughs> and I should have just played knight f6. You saw me like, oh, where should I move my bishop to? Uh, I've, if I just play knight f6, I'm doing quite, quite well. So, like, let's say queen d2, this is the idea I was scared about in the game, my opponent could castle long. But now I have the idea I was looking at, which was bishop b4. Bishop b4, trying to play knight e4, and use some, like, fantastic, fantastic pins. So let's say here, uh, king to b1, I don't know, knight e4. Uh, and now here, I, I just want to force b takes c3, really. Just, like, takes, uh, bishop a3, this queen shifts along, and, you know, some, some good ideas on the table here. And I think this is uh, already a very bad situation here. Yep, the advantage typically trends in, in our direction. Um, H3, I like this move. Queen A5, it's recommending. Just because uh, so many great, great targets. Uh, we can chase that king wherever it goes because all of our pieces are just playing so, so well. That's why I just love this. You know, you know, look, our bishop's out. We've got our rooks on these files. We've got so many, so many fun ideas coming here. If castle's short, uh, bishop d6. So, 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 so this, this is the standard reverse Urosov idea. So we're attacking h2 here because we're threatening to take this knight and take h2. And white, I think, should play g3, which is quite the concession. Uh, let's say just rook e8. It's, it's fortunate white has this bishop here because otherwise we're threatening rook takes e2 and taking this with the pawn not defending. Uh, but h3 allows bishop takes h3. And here's where the fun begins. You can see we've transposed into position played a lot of times with a very, very good record for black. Uh, so this knight can't move, uh, even though a few people have tried to do it, but queen h2 is just checkmate. So white here needs to know rook e1, only move. Knight g4, threatening to really utilize this h2 square. You know, here bishop f1, only move. So you can see here maybe some, some more common moves like queen g2, fall victim to some nice tricks here. Knight takes f2 check and come back here for a check to win the queen. So here, bishop f1, white should know. Uh, sorry. Bishop f1, only move. We go check, come back, queen h5, and now again, this one person has found this move, knight g5. Again, the only move for white to, to draw the game, knight g5, to uh, hold some sort of blockade back on h3. It's uh, so some crazy stuff, but... Yes, all, again, all the fun goes to black in uh, these sorts of positions. We always get to attack when we gambit here, and our pieces are just doing so, so good, and it's just so much fun to play. So, uh, but anyway, I did not play knight f6 in the game because I thought my bishop was attacked. I didn't see this was defended, so I played bishop b4. My opponent here very smartly realizes that they can just chase my bishop because now they've changed their mind from castling queenside back to castling kingside. Um, so, so, so they're able to push these pawns because they're not going to have a king to defend over here. So, okay, bishop b6, back, takes, takes, castles, knight f6. So they're playing all the smart stuff. And now they, they they do another smart idea. You can see here their advantage is fairly consistent on b5 and a4. So now what's going on here? So basically, when we're castled on opposite sides, we want to attack. Because, so, like I was saying, if my opponent's king was on the same side, they wouldn't be pushing these pawns. That would make their king unsafe. However, when we're on opposite sides, they can definitely push these pawns. And the goal of pushing pawns uh, on opposite sides castling is to trade them. And when you trade pawns, you do two things. Number one, you eliminate defenders around the opposing king by getting rid of their pawns. But two, and probably more importantly, you get your own pawns just out of the way for your rooks and for your queens, right? So a5, they want to play, they, like, they, they want to make a pawn trade to uh, use the a file here, which is a very dangerous proposition. But I have an attack of my own. They also have a king, and I'm looking at it too. So I play here knight g6. 
my idea is to play knight f4, put a lot of pressure on that bishop, which in turn puts a lot of pressure on this knight. This is a, a pretty powerful diagonal here. So my opponent correctly plays queen d2, guarding knight f4. And now here, rook e8, my opponent thinks for, thinks for a bit here because they realize my idea is to play rook takes e2. Stockfish recommends here uh, playing a5 and ignoring this, but it's, it's, it's a little tricky. So let's say here, queen takes e2, knight h4. And here, white's just immediately lost because the pressure on f3 just overwhelms, uh, and white just really has nothing that they can do here. Queen e5, threatening to trade queens. Knight takes f3 is check, and I will take the queen next turn. Knight takes e2, bishop takes f3. Takes, this is, it's, it's just a complete disaster to um, defend. The, 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 the threats around the king here just uh, totally overwhelm. So, so what they had to see, actually, was the move here, knight g3. Knight g3, a very powerful intermezzo, giving an additional shield around the king and forcing my queen to move. And here, uh, apparently white can defend and just remain uh, an exchange up. In the game, though, my opponent played rook e1, presumably to fight against rook takes e2, only I did it anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it just goes to show just how hard it is to hold these positions. Like, Stockfish says, like, plus two or something. It's, it's so scary, right? And, and you know, I even did something wrong in the opening, and my opponent's done, like, everything right uh, up to this point. But, like, the only way to defend this was to play knight takes e2 and to be able to, like, see that there's this uh, intermezzo against this very, very powerful and scary-looking rook takes e2 and sacrifice with, like, all my pieces ready to join the fight. So it's just so, so hard to defend, even against, like, like this is a very strong player. It's just so, so hard to defend these positions. Um, and it's just, like, again, why I love playing these gambits so, so much. I get the question all the time, do these things really work at your level? Yes, <laughs> everybody's human, you know? So, rook e1, rook takes e2. So we're having lots of fun here. So you saw in the game, knight takes e2. I'm going to play here, bishop takes f3. And again, this is just uh, overwhelming uh, threats everywhere. Uh, rook takes e2 again, uh, takes takes queen h3 coming, knight h4, lots and lots of pressure. Uh, so my opponent would lose with either of those. My opponent finds the only move. Queen takes e2, knight h4, queen e5. So here, overwhelming pressure on this knight. They're going to get mated unless they can get the queens off the board. If you're ever getting attacked, you should trade off the queens. Because without a queen, it's very, very hard to attack a king. However, they do lose uh, a knight wholly. So, because if they take it, they are going to lose this queen. So, they take my queen, takes, and now I have a bishop and knight for a rook and a pawn. And so, then we saw how I won this endgame, just bring my pieces back in. This pawn gets stuck here. It wasn't the best idea on their part. Knight d4, threatening some forks. And now here was actually my one mistake, uh, or here it was. So, I need to defend c7, and I played here rook c8. It's actually a big mistake, because g5 making this knight move, and now they have access to knight d5, that, that my knight's no longer there. And you, you see this king here, any check on it is going to be a big problem, and knight d5 does threaten to make a check on my king. And here, uh, this is a very, very not much, not good for black. So rook c8 was actually a, a mistake on my part, but my opponent didn't see it, and allowed me to uh, soon enough uh, eliminate that a7 pawn, after which we can uh, win this game by pushing that pawn all the way. And so that was that. I wanted to cover some one other very, very fun line, actually. Uh, so a couple other things here. After knight takes e5 and c6, again, we're dedicating this video to not knight takes e6, but there's knight takes f7, uh, which is actually the third most common move. The point being, king takes f7 is a mistake because of check and take the bishop. I don't want you gambit lovers to fall into that, so I, I will point out queen f6 is the winning move, threatening mate, and threatening to just collect the knight next turn. Next on the list, we have knight d3. I got a viewer question about this. So here, we will play just bishop b6 back. Knight d3, I mean, it's interesting. So knight f3, I think, is the top choice of the engine. But knight d3, I mean, it has a tempo on our bishop. It's very awkwardly placed, though. And we're going to be taking advantage of that. So like, let's say bishop e2, knight f6, knight c3. I mean, they're going to be playing these moves in some order. Rook e8, attacks e4. Because of this pin, bishop f3 being the only way to defend it. And now here, I want to recommend... If one pawn's not enough to generate an attack, two pawn sacrifices shall be enough. So let's gambit one more and bring in knight d4. So now we're going to have a lot of pieces playing, and this is going to be very, very fun, and white needs to be very, very careful. So if rookie one, we have here bishop f5, lots and lots of pressure here, and already this is quite good for, for black, 
Wait, should be playing like backward f1 or something crazy like that. But lots and lots of pressure on all these points. Um, so white should know here nate f4 they should play. Uh, but now I would recommend nate d7. So nate d7 temporarily blocking some things, but you know this knight's very, very strong. No way to really kick it out. So let's say d3, nate d5. And now we're threatening to play knight takes there and force g takes. So this bishop needs to move. Bishop h5, g6. Kicking it again. And now this is what I'm saying. It's actually fitting that the only move here is very, very hard to find for white. I would challenge anybody to find it. The only move here is an 84. It's just offering this bishop. And it's, it's, it's kind of fitting. This, this, this attack, now white is on the offensive. White is the one that needs to gambit something in order to, to be doing well. It's the only way for white to play, actually. Because, uh, so let's say bishop e2, queen h4. White's uh, clinging to their precious, precious material. So now... Uh, black has a very strong attack. I think white needs to play like g3 to kick this queen back uh, in order to be doing all right. And d or king h1, some tough defenses here. So bishop d2, let's say, and h4. So now we're threatening h2. And like, let's say they play here h3. We're going to play knight takes f2. Um, because we have this bishop joining the fight. Knight takes e2. They cannot take with the queen because we have our rook joining the fight. So then we are just uh, collecting this rook. And let's say here bishop takes g4. Play your bishop takes g4. Queen should move because of f3. This, again, this bishop's unleashed. So uh, queen should move. Knight f3 check. So much fun here. So we're, we're, we're threatening to, to checkmate there. Takes, bishop takes f3. And an unstoppable threat of just queen g4. Uh, and queen takes g2. Checkmate. So <laughs> we just have so many cool things going on here. Um, when we're able to just sacrifice stuff, get all our pieces out, and go for their king. Uh, thank you so much, Gambit lovers. And once more, how was that for plus three?